No more trespassers in the name of Jesus. Some of you guys need deliverance and you know you need deliverance. You know you got demons. You know you got evil spirits tormenting you. You know you have situations. Some of you guys don't even know that you have it. You don't even believe in it. But Jesus was doing this. Acts 10, 38. He said he was healing those that were what? That were sick and they were being oppressed by who? Oppressed by the devil. Your sickness, your disease, your pain, it's not coming from the Holy Spirit. It's not coming from God. That is a lie from the pit of hell. That God just puts you through all this pain. Every time something goes bad, we keep blaming God. We keep blaming God. We don't look at our sin. We don't look at a fallen world. We don't look at the unseen supernatural forces, demonic forces at work, spiritual darkness. He said, your weapons. He said, we wrestle not. Who are you really wrestling with? You wrestling with your brother? You wrestling with your sister? You wrestling with your, with your boss? You think we really wrestling with political powers? Come on. You think we're wrestling with CNN? We're wrestling with Fox News? We're wrestling with our teachers? Nah, you wrestling with spiritual darkness in high places. You wrestling with demons that have been sent out that hate your guts, that hate all humanity. They don't care about humanity. They rejected God's plan. The Bible says that they left their first estate. They went against, they rebelled. You got two rebellions. You got us in the scene realm. We rebelled when we sinned. When we ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, we rebelled and we continued to rebel and continue to think that we are here only for ourselves. Humanity is one of the most self-centered creatures because we think all of this here, all this here, we look at the building, we say it has no builder. We look at the world here and says, you know what? There's no creator. It was just an accident. We could just name everything as what it is. Like we created that tree. We may have created the chairs. We may have created the light bulb. But God is the one holding and sustaining everything. He says all things were made by him and for him. Everything you see and everything you don't see. So you obviously didn't create the unseen. We need to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. We need to know right now. That if you're not taking these acts of faith, you are not born again. Listen to me. If they just tell you, all you have to do is say this little quick sinner's prayer and accept Jesus. Show me in that Bible where it says that. There's not one word in there that says to accept Jesus. We like to negate and call every other thing. Why do you think that? Why do you think there's a spirit that always comes against people's minds? And tells them, you don't have to repent. You don't have to baptize. I've had people tell me, I believe in Jesus Christ. And I said, great. The demons believe too. And they tremble. How do you respond? They say, I believe in Jesus. I believe that he died for our sins. I said, okay. But he died for our sins, but for what? Well, he forgives our sins. Okay. So then do you have unforgiveness in your life? Well, yes, I do. Do you believe you can forgive? Oh, I can't forgive this person. Mind blown. Mind blown. You say you're a follower of Christ. You say you believe in Christ. But you can't forgive anyone? When Jesus clearly said, clearly said, even in the Lord's Prayer, if someone trespasses against you, you got to forgive them. Because if you don't forgive them, what? He said, "Your father, my Father in Heaven will not forgive you. Conditional, 100%. That's clear as crystal. Jesus said, the same works that I do, you guys will be able to do in greater. So what are we doing? What are we talking about? Why are we saying to ourselves, I just need a sprinkling of the water. I just need water on top of my head. That's it. The Catholic church, the Lutheran church, all these different churches, all these denominations. None of your denominations are even in the word of God. Period. Point blank. We need to come to Ephesians 4. We need to come to the unity of the faith. We need to understand 
that we're really wrestling against supernatural forces that don't want you to know who you really are in Christ Jesus. They don't want you to know how important it is to become born again, to be baptized in the water. The Bible says that these spirits, these spirits, they said that when a demon leaves a body, it goes to what? Dry places. Does it go to wet places? Uh-uh. No. Does it want to deal with that water? No, it does not. It goes to dry places, y'all. It seeks and it says, I need to find seven more spirits more evil than myself to go back into the home or go back to into its house. Guys, I'm telling you right now, the spiritual world is extremely real. Christ always wanted us to know this. Christ died. The Bible says that the Son of Man came. He came to destroy the works of the devil. The works. But then we say to ourselves, we're saved by grace and works not as, and grace alone and works. But then it clearly says that God prepared us for good works, predestined us for good works. So then what is that? I'm saved by faith and grace. No, no, no. You're saved by grace through faith. That's what Ephesians says. Through faith. Through trust and obedience to his word. Not just the belief in your brain. Not just I believe in God or I believe Jesus died on the cross and that's it. But then I'm just going to continue to live the sinful life I want to live. Because my, etern my salvation is eternal. Guys, stop being deceived. Hear me out. I'm pleading with you. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, if you have not fully, fully been, your body is not fully went into that water. You did not die with Christ. And you have not been raised with Christ. You have not taken that step. Please, I urge you, go do that. Get baptized immediately. Repent and be baptized. Put your repentance with the baptism. Know that you are dying to that old life, that old man, that old person. That you are not going to be a slave of sin anymore. But now you're going to be a slave to righteousness, to righteous living. That comes through a relationship in Christ. Key word, relationship. Why are we always calling this workspace? Baptism is not workspace. I have to work this. But here's the thing. The Bible clearly says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. There is a product. There's a response to the faith that is in you. Trust. Faith is being faithful. Not just belief in my brain. It's faithful. The Bible says he's pleased at those that what? Are led by the spirit. God is pleased by those who are led by the Spirit. God is pleased. It is impossible what? To please God without what? Faith. It's impossible to please God. Faith requires you to be faithful, to commit to something. That's why he said, deny, deny yourself and pick up your cross. Pick up. Pick up. Are we talking about allegorically? Are we talking about uh, um, just symbolically? No, he's saying pick up your cross. Do what you are supposed to be doing in God and follow me. Follow me is an action, guys. We're so caught up in this. It's like a it's just like a demonic lie that keeps putting in your head that I got to just stick to the way it was that I was taught this way. I have to go to this church building in order to know God. No, you just need to surrender to God. You need to follow what he says. Philip went to the eunuch. The eunuch didn't even understand, but Philip, a God sent a laborer out there to help with the harvest. Anyone that watches this, I'm telling you right now, God is going to send laborers to you. In fact, I'm definitely one of them. If you heard this word of God and you know, man, I've never gotten baptized in Jesus name. I never knew that it was a part of my salvation. I never knew that repentance was actually necessary 
for salvation. Yes, it's not just, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, no, I repent. I'm turning away from my sins. I'm not just being asking for forgiveness. I'm turning away. I don't want to live that way anymore. Well, no, I'm not perfect. Of course you're not perfect. But God makes you that. How? By being in Christ Jesus. Because he's the one that conquered sin. In his body, he never sinned. He never sinned. So when he died, death had no power over him. He disarmed the powers of darkness. He took away their authority. That's why the Bible says, and for him doing that, God, the Father, exalted him. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall be confessed. The name that's above every name for all remission of sins, for all forgiveness of sins. You cannot go through any other name. You can't go through anyone. It's only in the name of Jesus. That's why everyone, every single account you look at in the Bible clearly states being baptized into Christ, into Christ, joined with Christ through baptism, acts of faith. Your faith is being made alive when you make these decisions. You're, you're connecting it now. Your faith is just no longer something in your mind, but it connects to a reality. It's a reality. It's a reality. Jesus was obedient to all the realities. Hear me out in the spirit. Jesus was obedient unto the cross and even after. He was obedient. He was faithful to the spirit. The Bible says he even went out to the, the wilderness full of the Holy Spirit. Was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Do you understand that? He was faithful. He was faithful. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was baptized. He sent his Holy Spirit. He sits on the right hand of God. We all talk about Jesus come right into my heart. It's not even biblical, guys. The Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. How do you get Christ in you? You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he said, we will make our abode in him. The Father and the Son will make our abode in you. When? He said, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Those men on the day of Pentecost, those women, those people, Jews and people from abroad, are speaking in diverse tongues. Even beyond that, we get into all of this. That's a whole nother conversation. I'm telling you right now, Christ will give you a heavenly language. The Holy Spirit will give you that heavenly language that you'll be able to speak to God mysteries that edify you that you be able to pray to God and build you up the spirit of God will intercede on your behalf and will be able to make utterances no man can understand 